Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Now before I get started today, I just want to give a quick thank you to uh, Jonathan and James who uh, contributed to a Patreon page that I must have set up, well, absolutely months ago and I've got to be honest, I totally forgot that I had one um, but anyway, thank you to you guys for contributing to that page and uh, therefore this channel. So let's move on to today's video. Now there are tons of old Celerons available on eBay for next to no money. Look at all these cheap CPUs. The Celeron D346 is probably one of the most widely available, at least here in the UK. But don't let the D deceive you. This bad boy is a single core CPU and in fact is 50% worse than the 3.06 GHz Pentium 4 despite releasing a few years later in 2005. To put it plainly, avoid the Celeron D at all costs. If someone gives you an old Celeron system, consider it an insult. Unfriend them on Facebook. I'm just kidding. But after taking a look at Intel's latest Celeron a few videos ago and finding that it was actually okay, I decided that today we should go way back and see what sort of performance you could expect from an older Celeron like this one. Now this is a best case scenario because we've paired our Celeron D with a GTX 1050 which may help carry it somewhat in those GPU intensive games. Having said that, this may prove to be a lost cause. This processor was never recommended for gamers even back in 2005, so it's very likely that it won't, let's say, perform too well today either. But let's get into it. We're also using 4GB of DDR2, a 550W Corsair PSU, and an MSI MS7525 motherboard, along with Windows 7. Each of the following game settings were configured automatically in the NVIDIA GeForce Experience program. So let's begin. So first up we've got uh, Battlefield 3 and as you can see this is uh, what the game looks like before we've even got into any action packed scenarios. As you saw from the settings on screen there the game defaulted to medium at 1080p but having tried a few different resolutions and settings there really wasn't much difference in terms of the overall gameplay and it seems to be rather unplayable on this setup despite the GTX 1050. Having said that, it did run a lot better than Crisis 3, as you can see here, which runs at just 5 FPS. Now, the game once again defaulted to 1080p, but this time with the low settings, we tried a few different resolutions yet again, and a few different settings, but it seems that this was the uh, best case scenario, no matter how you looked at it, with 5 frames per second throughout our time in the game. So we tried a couple less demanding games, starting with Minecraft, which I finally remembered to benchmark. Someone in the comments keeps asking me to benchmark this game, and I finally remember to include it. Here, uh, at 1080p once again, with the lowest possible or fast settings, the game averaged 18 frames per second. It does look a lot more playable on the screen than it actually felt, but if you're happy with a frame rate like this, then there's no reason why you can't enjoy this game. Finally, it's a Counter-Strike Global Offensive. This actually ran the best out of the bunch of all of the games. And in my experience, I recall this being quite a CPU intensive game as opposed to GPU intensive. So I'm quite surprised that we managed to hit 21 frames per second on average here. This again was at full HD resolution with the settings turned way down. As you probably saw there, there are the occasional stutters and hiccups here and there, but it's nothing too bad when you consider that the overall frame rate is probably too low to play this game competitively anyway. And without a card like the GTX 1050, although a budget card, we probably wouldn't get anywhere near these frame rates that you're seeing on screen. But it's a bit of a vicious circle because you wouldn't want to buy a 1050 to put in your Celeron D system anyway. So there we have it. This has been the Celeron Disaster video. I think that's what I'm going to call it. <laughs> I hope you guys have enjoyed it. A look back at the uh, old Intel Celeron to see what they are capable of in 2017. And unfortunately, just like in 2005, the answer is not much. So as always, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Leave a like if you did. Leave a dislike if you didn't. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. And hopefully I'll see you all in the next one.